What is going on, Team Prime? I am back with another video, and today we are going to cover Toy Fair 2020. This is going to be a two-part video. I'm going to separate Transformers and Power Rangers just for the sake of the video not being super long. So, this is part one, which is Transformers. Well, actually, it will be a three-part video. For Part one is Transformers Generations, which is the War for Cybertron stuff. Part two will consist of Cyberverse and Studio Series, and then part three will consist of Power Rangers. So let's just go over War for Cybertron in general. Oh boy, do we got a lot of stuff to go over for War for Cybertron. <sighs> ah, yeah. <laughs> We've got so much War for Cybertron stuff to cover. That's not even funny. Okay, let's start off with what was announced today for the War for Cybertron Netflix cartoon, which will be premiering in June of this year. We've got a lot of stuff coming down the pipeline for War for Cybertron. We are even getting a toy line for this show. They will all be Walmart exclusives, and there will be multiple waves of figures. Um, you know, let me grab all the characters that they announced for this upcoming wave of figures. It's insane. Okay, so I got all the figures that are going to be in this upcoming wave of figures. So, like I said, to tie in with the War for Cybertron Netflix series, Hasbro has decided to partner, and Netflix also sponsoring these figures. We are going to get extremely battle-worn, uh, battle-damaged figures based on the characters in the, in the cartoon. Uh, we are going to get figures of Chromia, Mirage, Sideswipe, Hound, we're going to get a Reflector, but it's not Reflector, we're going to get another Seeker Mold, uh, Hot Link, we're getting Megatron, and uh, keep, keep count how many versions of Siege Megatron there are, that'll be important later. But we're getting all these versions of these characters battle damage like like you haven't seen before. And some of them even come with Battle Masters. But we'll get to that as we go through. So, let's start here with Deluxe Chromia. And uh, I'm going to move the camera over so I can just look at the picture myself while I... Go over the toy. So, you've got your basic Siege Chromia here. And she's got some massive paint rehaul. She's got battle damage here on her chest. Her arms, her gun, her shoulder, her legs. All are battle damaged. Her window is done in translucent blue. If I remember right from the toy. Like, the actual on floor toy it looked like that but yeah going to her car mode it, it's gonna look like she's gonna have a lot more battle damage in her car mode than anything else let me back up yeah she's going to have a lot of battle damage in her car mode her guns are just gonna be done in gray um, moving on from her, we actually go to the second most battle damaged deluxe that we're getting in this, uh, toy line. Mr. Sideswipe. Like, Sideswipe is battle damaged. Head to toe, like, he's got some serious amounts of damage on him. Um, pulling over this to this, his chest, there's barely any red here on the chest. His legs are done in gray, 
His gun is done in black and gray. Like, it's insane how much damage is actually on the toy. Um, only in car mode are you going to see any shape or form of this bright red. It's insane. Um, Hound. Pretty much the same, except uh, he's got more mud on him than he's got battle damage. That's kind of what it looks like to me. It's like he's got mud on him. I don't know. Um, Mirage is a very interesting take on what they're doing. I thought it was just a battle damage Mirage, but no. It's a Decepticon covert color scheme of Mirage. Like, he's done up in Decepticon colors. Like, uh, he's a Decepticon spy. Which is kind of cool. So his head is purple, his face is gray, his eyes are yellow. He's done in a very gray color. But he looks cool. And then, with the uh, reflector, from what I'm hearing... Hold on, let me get back to the image that we saw. Of Scrap Face. He is a... Autobot? I think he's an Autobot. I don't know. But Scrap Face is done in um, metallic red, metallic blue, silver, and dark gray. And then we get to Hotlink, who is looks to be a repaint of Skywarp. Mainly done in purple with black battle damage. And he comes with two Battle Masters who are called uh, Fire Twins. Or called the Fire Twins. And they're both they both share the uh, the blowpipe Battle Master mold. And then we get to Voyager Megatron, who I think is my favorite. I, Megatron of all the Netflix figures, I'm getting. I'm getting the Netflix Megatron for sure. Just imagine this. Gunmetal Silver. Imagine all this gray done in a dark gun metal silver. And he comes with two battle masters for some reason. He comes with a orange lionizer and he comes with the firebolt mold as pinpointer. Which that that's crosshairs is target master, so if you want Pinpointer, you're going to have to get... Well, here in the States, you're going to have to get this Megatron. But uh, I'm getting this Megatron for sure. He looks awesome. Now, there's no word on if there's going to be an Optimus Prime to go along with this Megatron. That's just Wave 1 and Wave 2. So, could there be an Optimus Prime down the road for the Cybertron? Uh, Netflix toy line? We'll see. But there is one more figure we have to talk about, and that is the secret figure. Which, it's Ultra Magnus, but they're keeping Magnus a secret for the sake of, uh, whatever's gonna happen in this toy line. Or in this series. Something, something in the first season of the Netflix show goes on with Ultra Magnus, and... Uh, according to J even John Warden and uh, the people at Hasbro, the minute you get this toy, you can't open it until the show, until the episode airs that, hap that has this whole situation. So they expect you to, once you get your toy, not open it until the show airs the episode. Well, I find kind of weird. But um, let's move on from the Netflix stuff and go straight into Earthrise. And uh, we've got a bunch of Earthrise reveals to go through. So, from Autobot to Decepticon to Mercenary. And we've got confirmed uh, characters in the Mercenary series. So, starting off with the, real, the reveals that hit us the prior night to Toy Fair, we have the De Deluxe RC, who I thought was going to be... Nope. She looks like she's a reshell, or has some similarity looks to the uh, original Generations RC, but uh, does not share a thing of it. 
and has a removable backpack, that becomes a, uh, a uh, hoverboard. If you're going to display this figure, do not display it with that uh, hoverboard attached to her back. Do not. She will have worse backpack than what the, the Fembot mold from this line had. It's even worse than Generations or C's. Or Generation or C's backpack. It's bad. Figure without the backpack piece looks amazing. This looks better than the original Generations RC. It, it just looks... Heck, it looks even a little bit better than the Masterpiece RC. Car mode looks phenomenal. I am just... I am really glad with what Hasbro's been doing lately. When it comes to doing accuracy. They have been doing a great job. With, uh going further into generations so moving on from rc she will be a must-have from uh from uh wave two and she is a wave two figure who is the next figure in my lineup here On, I have to. Uh, here we go. Deluxe smoke screen. Who does not share any engineering from what it looks like with his uh siege brethren? Like I'm looking. I've been looking at him for two days now, and I'm thinking. Okay, they have to share something. Like, now, this ain't fair now. We've got three versions of this mold as Cybertronians, and Smokescreen gets not only an Earth or Cybertronian release, but an Earth release. I really hope the other three get this treatment. Because Smokescreen looks phenomenal. Car mode looks just like an Earth Datsun. Smokescreen, uh, Smokescreen will be a must have. And then moving on from smoke screen, we have the um, conduit figure or the the modular figure for the next wave, like Ironworks. We have Airwave, who is a Decepticon, and he turns into a kind of like a broadside, like a uh, a battle station ship thing, sorta. He looks cool. I mean, I like the color scheme of the blue, the white, the orange, and the black. I will probably end up picking him up. And then the other battle station figure, who actually, no, he's a weaponizer, is a Fast Track, who goes to Scorpionock. He's, he's going to be like Cog, Six Gun, and Brunt, where he will break apart into weapons. Uh, and he, I will actually be picking up because I really like how he looks. And then, is that it for Deluxe? No, we have our official first look at our fan vote figure, Runabuck. Runabuck looks phenomenal. I have a feeling that either he's going to, him or Wheeljack are going to lead into Sunstreaker. One of those two are going to lead into our Sunstreaker figure. And today also John Warren did confirm that uh, Runabout will be coming out of this mold. So we're going to get both Runabout and Runabuck. Car mode looks great. And then, oh yeah, we do have one more Deluxe to go through. Uh, the Deluxe Quintesson Alicon. And that is going to be my, my probably set my third favorite Deluxe within Wave 2. Earthrise. The Alicon looks phenomenal. In both modes. Especially his uh, walking gator mode. He's a scary looking little dude. Probably have Starscream running for his own mama. But uh, he looks amazing. Now let's move on to the Voyager class and Leader class uh, within the Mercenary system. 
Oh, yeah. Uh, Alakon is... He is part of the Quintessons mercenary system. So, just let you know, the Quintessons are their own mercenary setup. Continuing with the mercenary and the Quintessons, we have the Quintesson Judge. <clears throat> and if you guys really want to see all these images, go down to TFW 2005 and you'll see every single image. But the Quintessons look great. They've got the five faces, the blast effect for the chair and all that, the wires. Then they turn into this battle station energy chamber thing. The chair turns into a, a platform. I mean, I'm not really interested in the ba in the transformation of this thing because it's the Quintessons. The Quintessons don't transform. And then we've also got... Uh... Um, one, two, three. Oh, I forgot about uh, Battle Master. There's another Battle Master. Uh, or two more. Double Crosser and uh, Slitherfang. We finally got to see what Slitherfang is. It, it, he's a, a ramp that turns into a snake. And uh, Double Crosser is a ramp that turns into uh, a two headed Battle Master. And Micromasters, uh, Racetrack Patrol and Astro Patrol, I don't care about. Moving on to Leader Class with Double Dealer. And Double Dealer, I like. He, uh, he looks really cool. And apparently he has a faction switching gimmick. I don't know. The promo renders show him as an Autobot, but the on-floor display images show him as a Decepticon. So, I'm confused. But, nonetheless, he looks amazing. And then you go into his, uh, truck tank with rocket launcher on it mode. And that is such a pretty looking... Pretty looking thing. I, I don't know how to respond to this vehicle mode, but it looks great. And then you have his beast mode, which is a giant bird, which I find really cool. And then he also has a uh, a uh, a base mode because apparently leader classes have base modes again. Astro Train has one. Uh, Double Dealer has one. Skylinks has one. That, that's our next. Actually, no, it's not. Next, uh, and then we move away from him and go to Voyager Snapdragon, which completes our Decepticon Headmasters. Snapdragon turns into a, uh, dragon rocket shuttle and a robot. But he looks... Awesome. Can't wait to pick him up. And then finally, the last Voyager class figure we have to go over before we move into the big scales. Remember when I said earlier on in the video, count up how many versions of Siege Megatron there have been since this line started? Yeah, Megatron. Um, we're getting another Voyager Megatron here within Earthrise. And I am slightly concerned about Earthrise uh, Voyager Megatron. I'm going to pull up my comparison image here in uh, a sec. From what I can see, he is a heavy remold of the Voyager Siege Megatron. New can't like they he shares a lot of similarities to this Megatron, but there's a lot of differences. For one, it looks like he's done in silver paint, which I really hope that's the case. But the the thing that's got me concerned about Earthrise Megatron is um 
that head sculpt. I I'm looking at the head sculpt and it yeah, it doesn't look like this. It looks a little weird, truth be told. Like the head sculpt's a little off. And I don't know, there's just something off about uh, Earthrise Megatron's robot mode. I can't quite put my finger on it, but there's something a little off about the figure. I mean, I'm still going to pick it up because it's an Earth mode Megatron and that's something I've been really wanting for a while now. I mean, yeah, it's... Siege Megatron's kibble and articulation and problems, but it's a slightly better Megatron figure. I've got no real big issue with... I mean, he looks great nonetheless. It's just that head sculpt slightly bugs me, and I can't really fathom as to why it bugs me. I, I, I don't know. It, the head sculpt just bugs me a little bit. Who knows? Maybe when the figure comes out, I'll get over it. I really hope I do because I'm going to have a lot of Siege Megatrons in my collection and I don't need to part swap with anything. So, there's that. Moving on to the last two figures. Uh... Obit or er, ah, Skylinks. Commander class Skylinks. Oh, Skylinks looks so awesome. Not only is he gonna be able to be the whole rocket shuttle giant griffin thing, but he can separate into Skylinks. Just have the rocket with the bird legs and the shuttle launch pad thing as a lion. Which I find amazing. Oh, I can't wait to pick him up. And then Titan Scorponok looks phenomenal. I love how Scorponok looks. He just... Oh. Him and Skylinks are probably going to be late purchases within the toy line. Because I'm always late when it comes to buying the big, big figures. So we'll see what, what ends up happening once those two are released and I have money for them. We'll see what happens at that point in time. But uh, that is it for War for Cybertron toy line in general. Uh, the, that was a lot of stuff to go through. Just, uh, <laughs> I'm very excited for the upcoming toys in the War for Cybertron toy line. I, I'm i looking forward to almost everything. Megatron's got me a little, bit a little bit skeptical, but I'm really hoping I won't have such a big issue with it. I, for some reason, I think the head sculpt's not completely finished. I don't know. Something's just not off, or not right. But, like I said, I can probably get over it. So with that being said, thank you guys for watching this lengthy video with me. Uh, stay tuned for tomorrow's uh, part 2 video for uh, Studio Series in Cyberverse, and then the following video for Power Rangers. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all later.